we are at day one, ride, ride one on the new Windspace G2 gravel bike build. I call it Blueberry. And uh, first ride on a fresh build, it's, uh, it's an important one. It's the one where all the things that you thought you had dialed, uh, well, they shake themselves out and you realize, oh, I totally didn't have that dialed. Or uh, you find out whether or not the fit that looked half decent while you sat in it in the shed was any good or not. It's not, hood placement, totally wrong. And it actually gives the thing some space to uh, stretch its legs and work out whether or not uh, everything's running up to snuff or work its way in. So right now, headset has finally come a little bit loose. Luckily, I've brought a bunch of tools with me so I can tighten that up. Um, the brakes, the brakes are bedding in, but uh, they're not great. Like they're not, I knew they wouldn't be good, but they're not good. They're actually especially not good because I've got semi-metallic pads on resin only rotors, which I, I was told not to do, but I'm gonna do anyway. Whatever happens, happens, I don't care. Also, you know that thing where like, you know that your stem and bars are perfectly in line with your fork and your front wheel, but because it's a new bike, you keep looking down at it and you're like, oh, that's definitely not straight. So you loosen it and then you move it and move it back to exactly where it was, tighten it down, ride a little bit and say, oh, it's still not straight. And you do that like four, five, six, maybe 138 times. And then uh, then you finally give up on it because you're like, no, it's definitely straight. And then you're good, uh, yeah that also so <laughs> that's why you bring tools with you on the first ride after a fresh build so that you can tighten your headset and put your hoods at a place where like you know the bike might handle a little better because right now they're like they're very roady and i want them I want them up Besides, uh, beside those minor quips, everything else has been uh, relatively well behaved. And looking, looking totally smashing. Purple, blue, in case you didn't know. Okay, I'm gonna set up the camera over here and then I'm gonna like, I'm gonna try and ride by it. If you don't mind in the comments saying, wow, that was very impressive because it won't look impressive and I like to feel good about myself, that'd be very much appreciated. Yeah, okay, so just, in the comments, just, wow, Eric, that was great. That's all I'm looking for. Thank you. Moving the hoods up, by far, best change I've made while out on this first uh, <coughs> shakedown ride. Saving that pedal strike, kind of impressive with one hand on. Now, the way I see it, on the first ride, you're gonna be like a little timid of, of everything. You're gonna be like, eh, I don't know the bike, I don't know the fit, I don't know how it's gonna ride, like what did I miss? But you're definitely, definitely going to ride like you normally would, at least like as close to as normal as possible. So you can get all those problems to just float to the top like a nice gnocchi, and then you can strain it out and. I, I like to fry my gnocchi, but um, I'm getting I'm getting lost here. 
That way when your comfort level goes from here on your new build to like here, you're, you're at one with it. Any of those problems that you didn't shake out on your first, maybe second ride, you don't really want them to be a real problem when you're fully confident and the bike is like, actually, wait, no, not, not good. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm gonna try and ride down there. All good. I'm gonna run out of daylight here if I'm not careful pretty soon. But one last section of single track. Oh, ground in. All right. Oops. Well, I'm definitely timid. Let's we'll say that. This is sort of my first experience of messing with carbon rims, and I, even though I didn't pay for them, I still don't want to break anything. Yikes. Keep beating them up. And if they keep taking the beating, then that'll sell me on carbon rims, low smoke count. The hubs have been really good. You know, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, I friggin' love gravel bikes. There's not any other bike on the market or like that exists that doesn't look out of place everywhere it goes. On the road right now, doesn't look weird. Gravel paths, doesn't look weird. Mountain bike trails, borderline, but still doesn't look that weird. It's not that far out of the realm of possibility. And yes, I know you can do this all on a mountain bike, but on a mountain bike, this part, it's just not as good. And keep in mind, I say that at the absolute height of my mountain bike interest. Heck, I ordered a dang custom full suspension mountain bike. You can't say I'm not into it. Anyway, uh, yes, I think that uh, this thing is fully broken in and ready to like just be grabbed at any moment take out without having to like look at anything first. It sort of shifts like total trash, but I put that down to a cassette that is 11 years old and a chain that is at least a year old. But beyond that, I am, I will repeat, I am a little bit timid of, uh, of riding a carbon wheel with like low pressure. I am scared to, uh, bottom out to, to like hit rim. And uh, I have a real tendency to have dents on every single one of my aluminum rims, which means I'm impacting them relatively hard. Uh, a lot of wheels don't make it out of here without at least one good dent. So I don't know what that would really mean for these carbon wheels, but uh, I can pretty much guarantee we're gonna learn. Though based on the little bit of anecdotal experiences of other people that I have heard, uh, carbon's actually pretty good at taking an impact. A lot of times it, it doesn't break or like it can't dent, so it won't dent either. Uh, worst comes to worst, you'll actually just cut the tire really bad. If you have any experience with these wheels, these Lun wheels, or even any uh, carbon cyclocross or gravel wheel in general, have you hit them really hard on rocks and what was the outcome.